we are looking at uh, thermal imaging and its application the basic introduction thermal therm therm is related to the temperature so this is also called as uh, thermography and when we use the thermal behavior of any object or the heat which is emitted to image to image an object then we call it as thermal imaging so we'll talk about the introduction some uh, development history we are going to see and the physics which is involved in thermal imaging first of all this thermal imaging is a technique of using the heat which is given off by an object to produce an image that is if there is an object or say a human being now heat is emitted we'll see the laws heat is emitted or the heat is given off by these objects and this heat will be used will be used to produce an image then we call it as thermal imaging so it's an infrared imaging science infrared means a particular spectrum part electromagnetic spectrum part and that is employed for this imaging it was first developed for the military use purpose in the late 1950s and 1960s while while the war was going on and uh, mostly developed by texas instruments hughes aircraft and honeywell in recent times it's it's being used heavily for the firefighting the law enforcement that is the security in the medical purposes and many other industrial applications so how it started the main year or dates 1800 infrared discovered astronomer frederick william herschel he discovered it in 1878 american astronomer samuel pierpont langley invented the bolometer bolometer in 1913 the first civil aviation or you can civil applications of thermal detecting was done and 1929 the first ir electronic camera was invented in 1945 nir near infrared used by the world war 2 snipers in 1947 first infrared line scanner was in place in 1978 microbolometer we all already talked about bolometer microbolometer was developed in 1982 thermography was approved for medical purposes that is to detect breast cancer in 1987 a thermal goes mainstream if you have seen the movie very famous movie predator the predator that is the alien is all you know watching the heat of the body to detect and to then counter or to attack in 1990s fire department adopted the thermal cameras in 2010s ir embedded testing equipment was being developed and introduced and 2016 first thermal smartphone and various other development are also there so this is the spectrum we were talking about and this is the visible spectrum that is the light where you can see so what happens in the normal camera or the mobile phones you have it detects the light which is reflecting off the surface and then because of some lenses and sensor it detect and change it into some numbers that are called as the brightness values and these brightness values are placed in form of a matrix in form of a pixel different pixels picture elements and the image is formed but when we talk about the thermal imaging we come here this is the portion we cannot see the thermal uh, band because it is above red so which is below violet it is ultraviolet which is above red which it is called as infrared so energy with wavelengths too short for humans to see is ultraviolet you know beyond this or below this we will not be able to see so ultra means higher than so we are talking about the you know frequency and wavelength here and energy with wavelengths too long too long for human to see is ir that is infrared infra means lower than so this is the portion we'll be concentrating here we have nir the mir that is near infrared mid, the mid infrared and the thermal infrared that is the emitted one so just uh, take an example that you have a cup of coffee or tea you placed on a platform so how can the heat be transferred the heat can transferred in three ways first 
the heat is transferred from this uh, cup to the base base here which is the conduction then there is a convection in in the in the tea or coffee you have the heat is being transferred here and then the heat goes out in the atmosphere or to the surroundings that is the radiation through radiation so we have a concept of black body radiator black body radiator so this black body radiator is an ideal thing it doesn't exist so it's an ideal thing all incident radiation is absorbed in this black body radiator and the emitted radiation is the only function of the temperature what is the temperature of this body so black body radiation we just saw every object whatever object is there uh, any you know given absolute temperature above 0 kelvin is going to emit the radiation so we are talking about the emitted radiation please understand emitted energy emitted heat or emitted radiation so anything which is above 0 kelvin is going to emit the radiation or heat so the maximum radiant power that can be emitted by an object depends on what only on the temperature of the object so when we talked about the black body, black body absorbs all incident radiation. We just saw regardless of whatever uh, direction it is coming or wavelength is there. So it's a it's an ideal thing. For a given temperature and wavelength, no surface can emit more energy than a black body because it is an ideal thing. So it will be less than that. And radiation emitted by the black body depends on the wavelength. That is the you know wavelength and uh, this uh, frequency also can be used because they are you know the terms are quite equal because the as the frequency increases the wavelength changes like this so radiated or radiation emitted by black body depends on the wavelength and other bodies too so there are four basic laws which are employed we will not go into the detail but let me just give you an idea of these basic law because thermal radiation thermal imaging depends on this first is the kirchhoff law of thermal radiation this means that the amount of radiation being absorbed by any object is equal to the amount of radiation that is emitted by that object written as epsilon equal to alpha the stephen uh, boltzmann law so simply the energy is directly proportional to the power of temperature 4 so energy radiated per, per unit this is energy, energy radiated per unit surface area this is the area this is also known as the black body radiant emittance this is directly proportional to this is directly proportional to the fourth power of the temperature that is the black body thermodynamic temperature and this is when you replace this proportionality sign you have a constant which is called as the stephen boltzmann law and this is this sigma which is the constant we use here then we have the planck's law Planck's law says the radiation which is emitted by a black body as a function of lambda and temperature. Lambda is wavelength. Wavelength is what? If you start from here, here, this, this portion is a wavelength. So it depends on the radiated energy, energy depends on what? The temperature and this temperature and the wavelength. This is the famous equation named after Planck. And this is the equation in front of you. you just you just have to worry about the lambda and the temperature others are quite constant like speed of light and boltzmann constant plan constant these are all e this uh, 2.718 these are all constant then the wien's displacement law wien displacement law says that the lambda is inversely proportional to the temperature that means the wavelength for which the emissive power density of a black body is maximum is inversely proportional to its absolute temperature that is its black body absolute temperature so lambda you can take here lambda into t is equal to some constant c so lambda max this is very important maximum the black body we are talking about the maximum uh, emissive power density so lambda max into t is some constant and if you see here the wavelength and temperature varies like this if you see the wavelength varies with the temperature so the wavelength of of the peak of the black body radiation curve gives a measure of its temperature as you see here this is these are the basic law of the uh, thermal imaging or thermography now whenever the thermal energy which is emitted by a body we need to detect it because we need to detect it and then we need to convert it some numbers so that we can form an image the way we do in the the optical imaging so there are various things or various uh, concept are there and on those concept various uh, 
you can say instruments or equipments have been made so first is the bolometer so it is just a sensor that absorbs the it's a it is a sensor absorbing the thermal radiation and the change in the resistance there is a resistance here when it changes the the change of resistance can be electrically measured so now you are able to measure the emitted uh, or whatever energy is being uh, received at this thermal sensor then we have thermopile it's an electronic device device it converts the uh, thermal energy the thermal energy coming into electrical energy thermal energy into electrical energy it consists of several thermocouples then we have pyroelectric if you see here the temperature fluctuation produced by the charge change on the surface of pyroelectric crystal so this is a pyroelectric crystal or a metal or material sorry so this is a material now this uh, radiation is coming and this pyroelectric uh, crystals the surface of pyroelectric crystals the change uh, will be in the charge and the this is because of the temperature fluctuations and this can be changed into electrical signals if you see here so thermocouple thermoelectric effect is there dissimilar metal junction is there it's cheap slow and insensitive a bolometer is uh, quite sensitive then this one and this ni nickel pt resistance thermometer thermistor at 1.5 kelvin when we talk about pyroelectric uh, triglycerine sulfate piezoelectric material is used fast and sensitive then then and this works in mid ir infrared range so what is the data processing because we have got the you know we need, we need some numbers from the thermal energy then only we are able to make an image so we pick up the infrared signal we need to amplify them if it is signal is like this we need to amplify them and we need to convert this now into information through calculations as we saw we have three different different things by which we can do so this is an ir detector this is a pre-amplifier this is analog to digital converter there is a processor then we have this image because there are digital interfaces some digital to analog converter and this can be put in some numbers and these calculations can be used to form an image i'll show you the image also and these are the some calculations don't worry about this this is just an introduction so how does it happen this is infrared energy it comes into some lens it focuses we have a sensor process sensor here then we have a processor properly then a memory and this transfers into a display so this infrared energy coming from any body you want to see the body you can see here so all object emit infrared energy as heat we know that every body has a heat signature so an infrared camera detects this is a camera which detects and measure the infrared energy of any object and the camera converts this infrared data into the electric electronic image that shows the apparent surface temperature of the body being measured so this is a very basic idea about thermal imaging thank you so much and take care of yourself